me get unmuted and let's take this away. I'll share my screen. And hopefully that should work, but I'm sure somebody will step in and tell me if I've uh, screwed it up. But uh, barring that, why don't we get started? My name is Josh Hadro. I'm the managing director of the IIIF Consortium, and uh, I'm really excited to be able to welcome you here today um, to also be able to kick off the events of this week. Um, this is, we'll get to that, I'll get to the numbers, but uh, the largest IIIF gathering um, in history. So uh, that's, that's a nice way to start. Um, what we're going to do this morning is just a little bit of a welcome to the week and the activities um, and provide just a couple of uh, points pointers of community news, um, but there are some pointers to other sessions later this week where you can explore more about all of these things. Um, so let's get started. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is basically what I'm going to cover, some opening logistics and community news. And then at the end, specifically, I want to touch on a few projects um, that uh, are being done by uh, us, the AAAFC staff, and I'll introduce us in uh, just a moment. But before we dive uh, into all of the announcements and all of that, I do want to take a second to thank our sponsors for um, making all of this possible. Um, so at the silver level, we have uh, Ex Libris. Uh, and at the bronze level, we have Gallery Systems and Saiga Digital, who um, yeah made it really possible for us to uh, put on the event using this platform and uh, to, to do all the different things we're going to be handling this week. Um, so very thanks, thanks a lot to, to those groups um, for helping us do that. And so here's where we get to some of the numbers. Um, as I said, I, as far as I know, and I'm, I think I would know, uh, this is the largest gathering of IIIF uh, interested folks in the world. There are now, I think, very close to 1,800 participants um, registered for this conference. Um, that come, they are coming from at least 37 different countries. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we're really excited to have uh, all these different folks join us. We know um, because it's spread out over so many different time zones, um, some folks will be joining us recorded. Um, but uh, yeah, welcome for, uh, for wherever you might be uh, in your day. And in terms of uh, uh, what's happening um, on the schedule this week, uh, you've already, if you're here, you've already probably familiarized yourself a bit with um, the Whova platform and app. You can see a picture of it there on the right. Um, all the, the elements that we're going through this week uh, are happening Tuesday through Thursday. There's more than 70 different things that you can, uh, can attend and be a part of. Um, all the sessions are being recorded and we will make them available online um, in the coming weeks. It will take us a little while to process those things. Uh, and for that reason, we really do encourage you to uh, attend live if you can. And maybe most importantly, because uh, the live chat uh, and the question, the Q&A will be a really useful thing if you're able to attend live and get your questions answered about uh, uh, any of the things presented in these sessions. Um, so that is all being handled by this Whova platform. There's the chat and the, um, uh, the presentation of the video, um, but there's also more than that. There's a little bit of uh, social interaction if that's something that you desire, or um, if not, uh, you know, you can also skip that as well, but uh, it is there if you like it. And uh, if you want to kind of break out and get a little bit beyond um, just the social aspects of the Whova platform, um, Twitter and other social media uh, are a great way to do that. Um, the hashtags, uh, the most common hashtag in our community is uh, the IIIF hashtag, the one for this conference specifically, if you want to use that, is IIIF2021. Um, and that is our official IIIF consortium accounts, IIIF underscore IO. Um, that's uh, how you could get to us. Um, but uh, yeah, feel free to tag us and, and talk about any of the things that you're learning here today or in the coming days uh, on Twitter and elsewhere. And uh, as a IIIF event, as is true of all IIIF events, um, they are governed by our code of conduct. And so this is something with the help of the community and volunteers uh, on our code of conduct committee that has been developed over, over a couple of years and refined um, a number of different times. Um, so we ask you that you familiar, familiarize yourself or re-familiarize yourself with that. Um, you can see the URL uh, is at our website, IIIF.io slash events slash conduct. Um, and uh, we, we are grateful to the folks who helped us put, us put together the Code of Conduct. And I also really wanna recognize the folks who helped make this uh, entire program possible. Um, 
so our program committee started meeting um, at the beginning of this year um, and helped us review the largest number of submissions to this conference that we've ever had, um, helped us figure out what the right way to do an online conference in kind of these current circumstances is um, all the different things all the way through to promoting and, and getting us to the largest registration numbers we've ever seen. So um, just want to say once more, Dan, Allison, Dot, Julian, Andrea, Rachel, um, we're really grateful for your help. Um, yeah, we're really excited to uh, see the results of the work this week. Uh, and other folks uh, I want to thank, um, well, I'll start by saying um, this is the core staff, of the IIIF consortium. So you heard from Glenn right at the top of the hour. Um, my name is Josh Hadro. I'm the managing director. And then Meg O'Hearn um, is the community and events coordinator. And this is the three of us are the ones who um, are full-time staff trying to help and uh, promote the work of the IIIF community. You can see a little bit about our roles there on the screen. Um, and you'll see us, uh, we'll be hosting and facilitating different pieces of the conference uh, throughout this week. Um, but I also put this here just to make sure that we, uh, well, so I can give my thanks and, and maybe others can join me in, in the chat and elsewhere and on the Whova platform, just giving thanks to um, Glenn and Meg in particular for doing all the really hard work uh, of organizing logistics and handling last minute details and all of the, the really um, complicated stuff that goes into putting on on uh, a conference like this. So thanks, thanks to you both. And uh, there's, as I said, there's more than 70 different sessions happening this week, but I will draw your attention to a few um, kind of high level plenary things that we may think uh, may be of particular interest to you. Um, later today, there is a keynote session, um, some really compelling work uh, that's been done kind of, um, really documenting some intuitions that folks have had about the IIIF community for a long time, um, but really documenting them and doing the hard work of, of doing proper um, UX and, and other research to, um, to back those claims with, uh, with proper research. So that's being done by Amy Deshane um, from Harvard University Library, um, and that's a little bit later today. So um, in a, just over about three and a half hours, um, whatever that is for your local time zone um, later today. Um, and then uh, on Thursday, we'll be doing a IIIF community update, and uh, uh, that will cover a, in a, a little bit more depth than I'm able to do here today some of the uh, really compelling work of the IIIF community groups and the technical specification groups. So these are um, kind of sub elements of the community that are formalized to um, make progress on certain avenues and in certain areas. Um, so we'll be going through those updates um, on Thursday, uh, first thing in the morning uh, for uh, US time zones, uh, 2 p.m. British summertime. Uh, and so we hope you can join us uh, for those. So now I wanna turn my attention to uh, a little bit of news from the community and from the consortium. Um, using this conference as kind of a nice anchor point to, uh, to announce some things to a, a really broad um, set of community contributors. Um, you've probably seen this map before, we use it a lot, but uh, we like uh, to use it as a representation of, of just how far uh, IIIF reaches in, in, into the you know, different global communities. So um, there's a lot of dots there. You can see the dots in blue represent the formal IIIF consortium members. Um, that actually financially support the work of the community. Um, and then dots in red are implementations that we know about and that we've heard about. Um, there are literally hundreds of institutions represented on this map, but we also know that there are probably hundreds of institutions and implementations that we are not yet aware of. So um, this is kind of a first call for you. Um, if you're looking at this map and you, um, you think there's a representation or an implementation we don't know about, uh, we'd love to hear about it. So you can go to that map, bit.ly uh, slash IIIF map uh, and take a look, take a closer look. Uh, and if, please email us or Slack us or, or however you want to get in touch with us and let us know about um, an additional uh, uh, implementation we can add and, and really help that representation uh, get documented on this map. And I'll also, um, add this call to, uh, to consider joining the IIIF consortium. So I mentioned those blue dots on the previous map. Um, 
they really do critical work in uh, funding our ability to support training and to support outreach and workshops. Um, and, uh, and so 57 members of the community right now are already consortium members. And if you're at this conference, if you've already kind of found the value of IIIF and the return on investment and the, the cost savings that um, it's already provided, um, please talk to us and, and consider joining this. There's a couple of different levels at which institutions can do that. Um, in particular, a lot of that support goes toward our, uh, our current um, strategy and our current goals of trying to do outreach beyond uh, kind of the areas where we have focused on um, historically. So we're really trying to uh, extend the reach of IIIF out beyond kind of the the United Kingdom, Europe, and North America, um, where it had, it had started. So we're getting some some good response there, but we really want to focus our energies, focus our efforts um, even further, and uh, and joining the consortium helps us do that. And now, uh, maybe the most exciting, um, or the first of uh, a couple of exciting um, uh, announcements that we have. Uh, so this is. Uh, Kind of a re-announcement of something that happened in March that we are really excited about. Um, we uh, were able to expand the ranks of the IIIF Editorial Committee. Uh, we welcomed three new members in March, um, which was the first formal expansion of that group since 2015. Um, so in just a few months, uh, Maria, Jeff, Don uh, have done tremendous work, have come up to speed, um, have been making really great contributions. So. Um, we're really excited to have them on board. Uh, we're really excited um, to be able to make kind of further changes and um, uh, and, and expand the purview and uh, and the work that the editorial committee does um, with this first step. So uh, Maria Whitaker, Indiana University, Jeff Mixter from OCLC Research, Don Childress from UCLA. Um, they'll be involved at the conference this week. If you uh, see them on the Whova platform or in one of the sessions, um, by all means, um, join us in saying congratulations uh, to, to them for, uh, for joining the editorial committee. And I also kind of want to take this moment to um, to reflect on just the the announcement that we made last year, which is um, it was the one year uh, in the first week of June uh, of 2020, which you know was a was an odd period of time for the entire world. But one of the nice things that happened um, uh, and, in, and exciting things is that we released um, with the help of the editorial committee and the broader IIIF community. Um, we released the 3.0 versions of the image and presentation APIs. Um, and so this was a really important update. It brought uh, a lot of uh, important um, additions to those APIs. And, and in particular, it brought the ability to work with audio and visual material um, as uh, a native piece of the um, AAAF uh, universe. Um, and so in the year since uh, we've We've been working um, on, or we've been working with those 3.0 versions. Um, we've seen major servers like Cantaloupe and IP Image, uh, as well as uh, AAA viewers like Universal Viewer and Mirador um, already updated to accommodate the 3.0 versions of those specs. Um, and on the AV front, we've seen a number of, uh, of systems like the Avalon Media System, the Europeana Media Player, Aviary, Audi Annotate Project, uh, and a bunch more. Um, working to integrate the um, interesting tools that come with the presentation 3.0 API. So um, that's kind of taking a look back um, at the last year, but uh, we also have, or it never stops. So there's uh, there's con continuing work happening on the specification front. Um, we have uh, four TSGs that are uh, working toward uh, making progress toward these specifications. TSG, I should say, is a technical specification group. Um, and those are the parts of the IIIF community formally um, charged with uh, making edits and, and contributions to the specifications. Um, so we have the MAPS TSG, which is working on uh, some extensions to the, to the AAA framework that allows you to um, basically align a geographic coordinate with a AAA asset um, and getting into the uh, realm of doing work that uh, geo rectifies maps. So taking a historical image of a map um, and aligning it with uh, current mapping software. 
Um, we also have authentication TSG and the content search TSG. Um, and those are currently underway doing the work of aligning those specifications with the 3.0 updates of the image uh, and presentation APIs that, um, uh, that we released last year. And then the Discovery Technical Specification Group um, has been operating for a couple of years, but has some really exciting work. And uh, we've got um, some, some specific announcements here uh, related to the work that that Discovery Group is doing. So um, the Discovery Group in conjunction with the Editorial Committee and the Technical Review Committee, all of which are kind of important um, oversight and governance elements on the technical side of AAAF. Um, with the work of all of those folks, we are very excited to say that um, the change discovery specification that uh, that TSG has been working on is uh, now at full 1.0 status. Um, so it's been promoted as of yesterday. Uh, it is now a full fledged um, API in the AAAF set of specifications. So it is now the fifth API um, at 1.0, at least 1.0 status. And it's the first new, totally new API since 2017. Um, so that's really exciting. And we hope folks will take a look um, at change discovery, which is um, uh, it, at a very basic level, a way of making AAAF collections available um, to things like harvesters, to so say Europeana or DPLA, and making those changes uh, available so that they can be updated if records get changed, updated, deleted, um, and make it possible so they don't have to be kind of scraped or re-indexed uh, the whole collection all at once. It makes it possible to kind of look for um, specific updates uh, or last updated by, for example. And then um, in, in other discovery news, um, there's a, a, a separate bit of work that the TSG has been working on called content state. Uh, and this is now at just kind of a pre-final version at 0 0.9. Um, and content state is um, essentially a, a mechanism by which um, you can uh, transmit or um, you know link to very specific pieces of a AAAF asset. So instead of just being able to link to an item at the top level, being able to link to specific regions or annotations or other sections within um, within a AAAF asset. Um, and and there's a couple of other things that it enables, like being able to pass these things from viewer to viewer, or being able to um, do citations um, in in a URL form. So um, we hope you'll take a look at the content states uh, draft that is now at 0.9 as well um, and, and see if that might be useful to you and, and provide feedback um, uh, before that goes to its 1.0 uh, release. And now I'm just moving um, to a couple of other uh, pieces of announcement from the AAAF community in terms of uh, events. So. Um, this is a nice image I like to use. and I like to look back on, uh, especially in the last year and a half or so of this pandemic. Um, this is the last time we were all able to gather uh, as a large group. Um, there were about 250 of us in Göttingen, Germany um, in June of 2019. And this was, um, this was, I believe, the hottest day on record uh, in Göttingen. Um, and it was, it was, it was really hot and uh, really hard, you know, like, uh, it was uh, it was really extreme circumstances to be in a room with so many people, but it was at the same time an extremely lovely um, experience to to be able to you know talk about AAAF and and share best practices. Um, and so while we couldn't do that this year, we are really excited to um, and 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 pretty confident um, that we'd be able to do this next year. So a week, uh, sorry, a year from now. Uh, we will be doing our in-person conference um, as we had intended a couple of years ago um, to do it in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So the annual conference in 2022 uh, will be the week of June 6 through 10. Uh, we will be in you know the coming months we'll get more um, specific about uh, which uh, which days will be the workshops and the conference and the showcase um, and elements like that. But regardless, uh, we are already very excited to um, to meet up in Cambridge and join our colleagues at Harvard University and MIT um, to uh, get together in person and, and do some in-person um, conference work. And actually before that, um, this this will be online, but we are also talking about uh, the fall working meeting. So um, if you're not familiar with the kind of rituals of AAAF, 
Uh, we generally do two big uh, gatherings a year. We do the annual conference that I just talked about and that you're attending now. Um, but we also have uh, uh, what we call the fall working meeting, which is geared toward um, making specific progress in the technical groups or um, serving as an anchor for community groups to uh, get together and talk about um, their their the work that they have in progress. Um, and it's also a great way to start getting more involved. If, if you really enjoy the way this conference works um, and you're, you're interested in participating in some of the community groups, the fall working meeting can be um, a really great way to, um, to kind of take some next steps. So that will be the week of uh, November 15th this year. Um, again, we'll be uh, announcing um, when we can kind of the more specifics of that, which which days exactly we'll be having which events. Um, but for now, hold that on your calendar. And looking a little bit ahead to another element this fall, um, we have uh, elections happening within the AAAF consortium. So uh, for those institutions that are already members of the AAAF consortium, um, we will be having elections for 11 seats on the executive committee. So this is uh, since the consortium was founded in 2015, this will be the first kind of full um, turnover of, uh, of members of that uh, executive committee. So um, just a, a note that those elections are coming up in October, 2021. Um, full members of the consortium are eligible to stand in that election and to vote. Um, and so there is still time. Uh, uh, to join the consortium if you are eager to participate in that. Um, we'd love to have you. So please get in touch with me, josh.hadro at AAAF.io, um, and we can work on that. Um, we can work on that in the near, near future. Okay, and in the last um, few minutes here, uh, before we uh, kind of go to the different tracks and, and first to the lightning talks that happen immediately after this session, um, I just want to touch on a couple of the um, high level pieces of work happening, um, particularly in uh, for us and the AAAF consortium staff, um, obviously with the support of many others in the, uh, in the community. So one thing I, I really want to just bring to your attention um, and recommend to you if you aren't familiar with it already is, um, is this, um, this piece of work called the AAAF cookbooks, uh, the cookbook um, of, uh, of best practice recipes. Um, so you can see the URL is AAAF.io slash API slash cookbook. And what this is, is basically a, um, a tool for documenting the the best way to do um, various use cases, uh, common use cases in the AAAF universe. And so um, ranging from the simplest use case of just one image uh, on a manifest um, to maybe a more complex uh, a book object um, to more complexity still with say captioning audio and visual content, the best way to do that um, in, in the AAAF presentation um, uh, uh, API. And so there are already 30 recipes that have been approved. They've been vetted um, by uh, cookbook authors and by our technical review committee. So um, they've had a lot of eyes on them to make sure that they are um, really representing the best way to do AAAF um, techniques. Um, and we have more of these um, going up for approval every month. So we're adding more and more um, every time the technical review committee meets. Um, and so please, by all means, um, take a look at these or pass them along to folks at your institution who might find them of value. Um, or uh, we'd love it if uh, you are interested, if you've um, worked on something uh, and you've kind of worked through the complexities of one of these um, one of these use cases uh, and you'd like to write a recipe, we'd be really uh, eager to have you join us in that process. Um, and uh, I will, there's a URL there for the GitHub for the cookbook recipes. If you're familiar with that process, uh, the, there's some documentation there about how to join in. Um, and I just wanna take this moment to, to thank the folks who've been involved with this because uh, so much work has gone into it. Um, so Don, Brian, Dananji, Trip. Uh, Regis, Maria for, for doing the work of drafting those recipes and working through all the, the pieces of the process um, and to the editors who are uh, kind of helping um, make the process work. So Maria again, Andy, Jack, Patrick, um, as well as the folks on our technical review committee um, 
who, uh, who are doing the work of meeting every month to review those um, submissions and, and, uh, and providing suggestions and, and, uh, and doing the work to make sure that they represent truly best practices um, that will be useful to uh, anybody who looks at those. Um, and another piece, uh, so kind of at the other end of the spectrum for folks who are just um, maybe just becoming familiar with uh, how AAAF works, um, we have been um, adding um, uh, training courses. So this was a product of a lot of the pandemic pivot in the last year. Um, we couldn't do in-person meetings. So uh, we started doing a lot of online training and we've had um, more than 120 people uh, work through our open access training materials um, or our in-person training sessions, sorry, our synchronous training sessions um, already. Uh, we made the decision and, and we're sort of proud of doing that, of reserving one third of the capacity for each of these training sessions um, as a free fellowship ticket. Um, for folks who are um, from underrepresented parts of the AAAF community. Um, and we've seen um, great uptake of, of those fellowship tickets. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna continue doing this training. So the next iteration of this is um, in July. Uh, it'll be July 12th through 16th. Uh, and it starts at 9 a.m. British summertime. So it'll be convenient um, for folks in time zones in the UK, in Europe, um, all the way stretching to some Pacific time zones. So uh, it happens at 4 p.m. on the Western edge of Australia. So just at the end of the day um, in some Australian time zones. Hopefully if that's of interest, um, take a look at our Eventbrite and you can see the training session there. And I will conclude here with just a few notes on um, some uh, outreach work that we're doing. So um, we founded an ambassador program uh, we have ambassadors working in the areas of Serbia, China, France, um, in the domain of natural history. And then um, we have an ambassador, Frederick Zarnt, um, who is our point of contact um, for IFLA, um, been really helpful in making connections there. Um, but as we've been talking about, uh, a lot of our ambitions and goals for the coming years um, are to uh, get uh, AAAF and outreach um, targeted and, and um, set up and doing trainings in parts of the world, uh, in particular where we haven't focus, focused as much um, in the past year. So uh, if you have any suggestions or if you yourself would um, like to help us um, work on this and, and facilitate some of these connections, um, the outreach group in particular is looking for um, some help um, and so we can, you know, we'll, we'll, if you want to be a co-chair, that's great, but we can also just, if you just have suggestions uh, uh, or, or um, contribution short of being a co-chair, um, we'd be happy to work with you. So uh, we have contact info at the bottom there um, uh, and we can get you, we can get more information to you and uh, help you figure it out. So I will leave you with just these last few calls to action uh, for you to consider. So as I mentioned, maybe, uh, consider joining us as part of the AAAF consortium. Um, at an individual level, uh, participate in one of the community groups uh, or committees. Um, talk to us about being an ambassador to a region in the world um, and take a look at those discovery specifications that we just announced um, and help us by providing some feedback on that front. I'll end this here. Um, the next bit of, uh, of the conference is the lightning talks, but I'll say, quickly, just thank you so much for joining us, um, for being a part of this week. Um, and we look forward to uh, seeing you in the rest of the sessions throughout today. So um, today and uh, the next couple of days. So thanks so much uh, and take care. We'll see you on the Hoover platform. Thanks.